So as you know, I'm a big fan of the Star Wars builds in TOTK, but the Cherry Tuner takes the biscuit. He's recreated the attack on the Death Star from A New Hope. This is Red Leader standing by. Gold Leader standing by? Let us command, where the hell is Green Leader? Unsure command, that's a negative. I've got no time to figure it out, you've got TIE Fighters incoming! Copy that, making my attack run? Ineffective, I repeat, attack is ineffective! I can't shake him! I've lost power! Damn it, where the hell is Green Leader? Hi, my name is Dom and welcome back to Top Gaming Plays. Don't forget to drop a like if you enjoyed today's video and submit your clips using the link in the description. But let's get into it. Who's ready to kick themselves again today? Aquatic Ambi has been looking for an easier way to complete rock puzzles. The first attempt was to use auto builds using rocks, but that doesn't work. But do you know what does work? Using a weapon fused with a rock. No more lifting and carrying rocks. Just a normal day out in the desert farming Lizzlefoss. Wait, what are these guys up to? Excuse the recording, but this was too good not to share. Fusing a shield with a homing cart creates a powerful skateboard that you can use to zoom around Hyrule. Genius. Arsian found a smart use of float balls to create an amphibious war machine that has a surprising amount of speed and maneuverability on land and water. If you're looking to shrine steal some float balls for your own contraptions, there's two places you can get them, either the Radiwak or the John Sao Shrine. And continuing on the theme of float balls, we've got this impressive creation by Blaze. What makes this vehicle cool and interesting is maneuverability. Blaze can rotate and drive the vehicle forwards and backwards very easily. And our last build that uses float balls to great effect is this strange thing by T-Wolf. This design has no right to be going this fast and it handles super well. In Ambi's own words, if you're not getting around on the puppy mobile, what's the point? <laughs> the 
The Flying Dutchman is a legendary ghost ship doomed to sail the skies of Hyrule forever. Well, at least in Link's universe anyway. Although, with RP Dax battery draining this fast, we better hope it can make port. So every time we feature this boat hull, we get comments asking where to find it. The boat can be found on Tonoko Island in Nekluda. Wii Sports Pro has built a beautiful helicopter that will drain your FPS quicker than it drains its batteries. Two perpendicular wheels provide the rotation of the fan-powered blades, while the key to mobility and lift is using the wing as a base. Time for the prestigious Build of the Day Award. Slick the Stick shows what's possible when you shrine steel candles. In this example, the balloon is helping with lift, which creates an ultra-efficient vehicle. Candles seem to produce a bit more lift than torches, although I take that as opinion versus fact. This is a unique spin on a popular design using something new and inventive, which is why it takes today's build of the day. If you're looking to shrine steal a few for your own experiments, the two shrines that contain the candles are on screen now. This is Alfredo the Impasta's off-road buggy and it features a cool mechanic that deserves some major kudos. Watch as Link disembarks from the steering stick. The driver's pod raises, creating a small hatch for Link to exit from the vehicle. It might not be the most practical vehicle of all time, and there's arguably better ways to handle all terrain now, but this both looks amazing and keeps Link protected. The build is pretty part heavy, so according to Alfredo, it's about 60 Zonite to build from scratch. Worth it. And Alfredo isn't the only person playing with steering stick activated mechanics. A user who wanted to remain anonymous has built a Transformer-esque vehicle. Jumping on the steering stick activates these three wheels, which then pull sleds into a position that encloses Link. The design is pretty smart and he's even incorporated cannons onto the side sleds. Which wasn't smart. And it's time for House of the Day. LED Gamer Girl has used the ground floor of her house to show off her bow and shield collection. The second floor uses a well-placed triangle room to open up into the garden space and pond. And the stairs down the rear of the house are a nice touch. This is a neat contraption from Cutbot. For just 15 Zonite, you can build your own portable auto toastomatic. This thing will let you bulk sear food in the enclosed space of a hot air balloon basket.
In a borderline maniacal move, Luna Cannon has built themselves a divine beast. The cooking pots really bring the snake-like body to life. Sock Snatcher let us share his concept for his all-terrain vehicle. All it uses is a cart, steering stick, two small wheels and a fan. One of the best things about it, it's cheap. This thing will only set you back 15 zonite. One of the many reasons I love the community we've built on this channel is people iterating on other people's designs. Twisted took T-Wolf's gimbal aircraft and came up with a solution for those who wanted a simpler build than using Korok fronds. Use wooden sticks. T-Wolf's design is still better if you want better handling, but this is much simpler to build. when Zelda says her parents aren't home. Thanks so much for watching guys, don't forget to hit subscribe if you're new, and we'll see you tomorrow for another video.